Hi, I'm Neil Lukasich. I'm Christina. I'm Martin Hitch. And we are IV. We're a family and friends design collaborative. Our work aims to celebrate the co-sentience of everything in the environment, living and non-living, past and present, I and me. We've been working on these proposals for Compound Yellow, which is a um, nonprofit located here in Oak Park. We're here in Com at the kind of Compound Yellow studio right now. We were approached by Compound Yellow to put together a proposal for um, an event structure or a community, um, a, a piece of art or a stage that would kind of engage the community while also facilitate some of the music program that uh, the organization does here in the side yard. So. Um, our kind of approach here um, has been to kind of demonstrate several proposals for these different pieces of infrastructure at the side yard. Yeah, I think we were really inspired initially by Compound Yellow's vision of the art space as something ecological or what they called a mushroom and how an art or event space can act as a kind of rhizomatic connection between the various threads of the city fabric. Their vision of the mushroom is kind of similar to a description we had of our infrastructural projects as moss, or the idea of the community or the art space as a mushroom is kind of similar to our idea of creating urban infrastructure more like moss, like something that is growing in between the kind of cracks and crevices of the city and giving back more than it takes. I do think that there's something interesting about the mushroom as like mycorrhizal thing that's connecting multiple things. I think that's what they initially reached out to us to say and that did remind me of urban moss or this idea of urban infrastructure as something that can happen bottom up rather than something that happens top down and imposes a kind of use onto a community. Yeah, I mean, I think even like the way the side yard is used echoes, echoes that, right? Like you talking about that, the way that the moss kind of like, what you say, fills with like the cracks in the community. It's like, I feel like that sort of echoes, like you said, the kind of compound yellow vision, but then also the vision for what a structure in the side yard would look like and like what's it here to facilitate. On one hand, it's a space to facilitate concerts and it's this side yard sounds program. On another, it's, uh, you know, seating infrastructure for barbecues in the side yard. And it's also a curiosity for school students that are walking past. You know, I mean, how many times have we been here? Have we seen like somebody, like a group of kids, chained together, hand in hand? You know what I mean? That are like gawking at the chickens or curious about you know what's going on inside here. It's like I feel like the programming of this. I mean, honestly, even being here is more than we are imagining. It. Like as much as you kind of imagine how it spills out into the community in the model, like seeing what. How much of how much spillover there is between the side yard and the community and the street and you know what I mean like the public I think is like the most unique thing about the side yard as a site for sure. We were kind of originally asked to put together a proposal, like we said, for the stage structure for a space for kind of community gathering and seating and infrastructure. Um, and kind of in thinking about what that would look like, we'd never been to the site, we weren't particularly familiar exactly with the organization, and so we were invited out this week. Uh, there was an opening in the gallery space here, and so we kind of started brainstorming in parallel to how we could fill the space, to how we could fill the gallery space, and what we could do kind of as a community event while we were here for the week, and we really thought it would be important to have community input because the organization, Compound Yellow, is so focused on serving the community and sort of the way that its programming relates to Oak Park and to Lake Street. Like, we really wanted to have a space for community input, and so we kind of did a lot of brainstorming as to how we could 
engage with community members and even engage with members of the organization, kind of as we were developing these projects. And so yeah. a lot of what the show kind of becomes is almost like a behind the scenes look at our process as well. And so we were working on our own on these models that we kind of used to ideate these concepts. And we were thinking, if we have this gallery space available, if we know we want to have feedback from the community on these spaces, what if we kind of use the opportunity to come into this gallery and to present the ideation process to the community and present, uh, kind of facilitate kind of a town hall where we're able to show our ideas, but also see the space and engage with people who are part of this community and who are involved with the organization and see some of the organization in action this week as well. Yeah, and part of the idea behind the exhibition and behind what we've produced is that we've kind of started brainstorming and started this process of ideation and in the gallery itself we'll have templates available for anybody who visits to draw or sketch out their own ideas and visions of what the space can be and they'll be invited to pin them up in the gallery alongside our own ideas and once the gallery is over on July 29th we'll collect all those ideas and compile them into a booklet that we will then um, kind of take into account as we develop the final design for the side yard. I think in all of the proposals, something that was really important to Compound Yellow and to us was to create these different levels and spaces for people to interact with and to try to create a variety of experiences for users, places for people to seek out and find and to adapt to their specific needs for that day and to find a, to, to seek out these different areas of comfort on the site. And that's the idea behind this weaving path which weaves around the site and around the trees and through the various buildings on the compound to shape these various spaces around the tree, um, around itself to create the stage, and around a fireplace uh, that then has this kind of iconic uh, balloon. And the idea here is that um, as the night starts, the balloon will be deflated, and the community or people will start a fire, and then as the fire grows, and as people grow and come around the fire, this hot air balloon will slowly inflate into a heart which sends a message of love and peace to the community and beyond. I think kind of across the board with the proposals, especially knowing that we would be presenting these kind of as models as part of this gallery show, we kind of began to give ourselves permission to sort of explore a variety of levels of complexity and feasibility and conceptual uh, I don't know, conceptual. A big, a key word for everybody I think was imagination, yeah, trying to true. not hold ourselves back with what this could be in the most mundane and then in the most spectacular yeah, exactly. level. Um, so the concept with the, with the exhibition was to kind of exhibit a variety of proposals and kind of a range of different proposals and so I think ultimately we've kind of modeled and and have illustrations and drawings that accompany each of each of the distinct proposals and I think that there's six sort of ultimate proposals from us that will be displayed alongside input from the community within the gallery and so one of the things kind of looking at the site especially with the with the sort of adjacency to the sidewalk was sort of how to take advantage of that kind of linear, the, the sort of hyper-linear site, we, knowing kind of that there was an interest from the organization to have these kind of multi-level experiences and platforms for kind of a range of interaction models, kind of using this sort of hyper-linear kind of winding streetscape sidewalk that wraps through, um, that kind of wraps around the site, interacts with the trees, kind of, um, almost kind of explodes that kind of linear site element of the sidewalk into something that becomes um, sort of multi-story and kind of uh, accommodates a variety of 
kind of interaction models across the site. Similarly with kind of the duct model here, kind of looking more explicitly at it, it looked like what it would look like to tier multiple levels, have multiple stages that both act as a ground covering and support and also becomes um, sort of tiered stages and as well as like shade, shade coverings for the site. Another kind of model that we were exploring was how the community themselves could become a part of the experience of constructing a model on the site as well, and so exploring more um, uh, like kind of piecemeal solutions or like a kit of part solutions where a modular piece could be designed that could be constructed then into a variety of interaction models using the same components, and so kind of exploring um, smaller kind of um, modular elements like like a hay bale structure that could be you know, design with seating elements that then could be stacked and rearranged on the site depending on the particularities of, a, of an event or of a, of a need at the site at a given time. Similarly with the Maypole kind of concept here, looking at a, at a design that is inherently flexible, that changes with each use. So as, um, as somebody inhabiting the space, they are the ones making the decision about how the space takes form and every time it's erected it takes on a different character depending on the people interacting with it. Yeah, I think too, to that same point, just one thing that was really important in all the designs to us, or one thing we wanted to think about was the kind of ritual of uh, using the space. So whether it's the hay bales or the idea with the ribbons, um, you're as the community comes together and engages with the piece of architecture, um, they're actively creating something every time it's used, whether that's taking one of these strings or ribbons and clipping it onto the built-in furniture or taking a modular uh, bale and moving it to uh, find somewhere or to create a kind of space for you to sit. And I think that's one of the through lines through all the iterations. I'll say too, I think that there's sort of, you know, Compton Yellow from the beginning was really uh, I think they were apt like looking to kind of capture a sense of playfulness and joy and even silliness in some instances of how they view the organization and how the organization exists within the the community and so kind of looking at, um, at ways to kind of introduce a bit of kind of joy into whatever this structure is as well. I think it's important sort of as the, the site is so public that I think that there is such kind of a visual, visual interest inherently with what's happening happening at the site and I think any way that the, the structure at the side yard here could aid to that sort of visual interest and joy and excitement in the space. Um, and we really wanted it to draw people yeah. in. So to engage with the sidewalk and the context, but then to break or expand the sidewalk so that people feel invited to step into this space, whether there's an event happening or whether they're just passing by yeah. on an afternoon. And with both like the, the heart concept and the ducks, there's something too about this Kind of inherent understandability of the iconography of the form. You know, the heart and the duck are kind of two different instances of a form being sort of deconstructed into its most basic symbology, almost like it was like drawn by hand or drawn by a child. And I think that there's something really interesting about that too, as it relates to the projection of compound yellow to the community as well. There kind of being this iconography around these elements as well. I kind of, you know, imagine, I, I know just from conversations with Laura too, there's lots of conversations around sort of what does Compound Yellow do or what does the side yard program do? And, and I think something like this adds, kind of adds to that conversation, right? I imagine a world where there's this big duck sculpture built in the, in the side yard and, and that becomes a recognizable symbol of what the organization is, you know. Oh, is that the 
Is that the group at the that's the group at the park, right? That's the group at the boy. There's something I think really powerful to the simplicity of the kind of objectness of those kind of symbols. I think there's an ambiguity to all of the designs as well. Nothing they don't tell you what to do or they don't tell you how to behave. And I think there's a kind of radical freedom in that it's not a prescribed space, but rather it's a space for people to come and to explore and to maybe find these diverse uses. And in that way, I think it engages with the kind of horizontal organization of compound yellow as an artist run space, where there isn't a kind of hierarchical function to these various spaces. And uh, as opposed to that, people are encouraged to come and explore and find spaces. I think too, with the designs and the representation, there was a desire to keep everything playful. And the model is kind of done in this childlike way, made out of paper, like it's a big set piece or dollhouse. And I think somehow that playfulness carries through even into the design of the various proposals and installations. Mm -hmm.